Hi everybody. Little Mozart in the background. Here's what I'm going to do as quickly as possible. I'm going to run through our course website. I did this this summer, but it wasn't complete and a lot has happened between then and now. So just let me run through this very quickly. <clears throat> and you thought the Game of Thrones was interesting video. Just wait till you watch this screencast. Change your life. Okay. So there is our website, just in case you've forgotten what it is. All right. And so I'm on the home page here. There you are. Good looking group. And there is the, there all of you are. So thankfully, all of you completed your ePortfolio shells, so I should be able to pick any of these. Joel, are you there? And he's there. And it's that simple. Okay. So all of you have done this. That's fantastic. Here are your assignments. ePortfolio development, that's ongoing, so that means you just you do it throughout the semester. Assignments that are scheduled. Digital story, media literacy essay, flipped classroom project, art media project. Okay, and just to get an idea of how the class flows, here you will find the details for each one of these. So... Objectives, activity, ISTE, standards, and so on. Answers some FAQs, frequently asked questions. Okay, and here's what you turn in. A story map, a script, a two-column story table, create your media piece, and so on. Okay, it's all there. But to give you an idea of how the schedule flows, I put that elsewhere. Um, okay, and I did it like this because I think it's a lot cleaner. So, we're on to your digital storytelling uh, assignment. By September 3rd, already a little late, I, I appreciate. However, uh, all I need is a paragraph. Email it to me, and I will respond to you as quickly as possible about whether I think that's a workable idea or not. Okay. <clears throat> uh, then you're going to create your story map. Story map is explained explicitly in the on the digital storytelling page as is the, your narrative and story table. Now, I just noticed that I split these up, and you can split them up. You can put just your narrative. Those are just the words that you speak. The story tables where you split it and put the narrative on one half of the page and notes about production and images you want to use on the other side, on the other half of the page on the right side. If you just want to post the story table, that's fine because it has the narrative in it. I am, the whole point of this is to give you tools to help students create narrative about anything. Science, mathematics, it just doesn't make any difference that I have developed that save lots of time and get you to the goal much faster than um, storyboards. Do not use storyboards. I, I, I mean, storyboards, if you're in professional media, go ahead and use storyboards. Outside of professional media in a classroom situation where I know how pressed you are for time, you need tools that move along more quickly than that. Okay, so notice in each case, I tell you what to do, post on your portfolio and send me the link. Send me, don't just tell me it's there, please. Send me the link. Then you create the media piece, continue working on it, finalize and post it. Okay, uh, and send me the link. And there, you know what, you guys, there are two other things I need to add here. I'm just seeing that. Send me the link and also a two-page reflection. And, well, here, let's go to the source, Digital Story. So when you're all done, when you're all done, you write a two-page reflection about what you think more generally about the role of new media in the lives of your students, uh, as students and digital citizens, how can you use the generation of media that you went through with your students? That's basically the question you're asking there. And then the last thing is I want you to create a trait scoring guide and rubric for new media generation with your students. And uh, you can go grab something off the web. I find the single most important aspect of a rubric is that the teacher understand it 
and the best way to understand it is to create it yourself so that when students come up to you and they say, um, and they say, what, you, what is it you're looking for here? It is close enough to you that you can actually answer that question. Okay. So I will put those two things on there. All right. All right, let's go back home. Going back home. Here we go. Uh, media literacy. This is just two weeks. I, it would be absolutely irresponsible of me at this point not to have some assignment in art, media, and technology that doesn't reflect upon the role of media in society, and particularly in an era of fake news and all those other things that happen in media, in the media world, our, our students absolutely have got to start thinking about these things. And so I just want a really short paper about the nature and importance of media literacy in professional activities. And I will post some um, things to watch and read here, and I'll make them brief. Okay. And I obviously have a problem here. <laughs> I'll take care of that. Okay. All right, um, to, 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 to the flipped classroom. So here's the deal with the flipped classroom. It's not just creating a flipped video. You know, you all know what flipped means. Let me turn the music back up. Um, you know, it, it started with a couple of teachers realizing the students were missing um, their presentations in class, so they they actually did a screencast much like the one you're watching right now uh, about the material and uh, then they would come to class sort of prepared and then it occurred to them hey what if we what if that was the norm they went home and they watched the presentation and they came to school and worked out the problems that we send we usually send them home to work out and so flipping the classroom but you can't just create a video okay you need a basis, a design basis, and understanding by design is as good as any I've seen in quite some time. So here are some things to view. Note they're not long and read. Again, not long. A standards application. You should explore the content areas relevant to uh, your discipline. If this is helpful to you, great. But I would think if you're creating a content oriented academic flip video these might be useful to you okay uh, a couple of short ones why I flip my classroom how to flip your classroom should I flip my classroom those are all good they're short and they will sort of put some things in perspective okay so you're going to um, create your understanding by design plan for a unit you can use simple templates that you find them at T's website and then you're going to create your flip video and a short reflection on that project. Okay. Art Media Project. Waiting. Waiting. Okay. Um, this is probably not as fleshed out as others, but here's the deal. You want to create something that blends art, media, technology, and brings them to bear on teaching in your content area. And you should use as your goals advancing yourself technically, so maybe it's a new piece of software, a new piece of hardware, and that's sort of low level but important that you get done. And then you're going to create a classroom application and reflection about what you learned doing that. And what, you're, what are you going to post to your portfolio? Write a, a two to four page meaty, apologies to vegetarians, reflection describing it and what you gained from it. Um, and what I always love to see there is um, uh, ideas for lesson plans. Okay, it shows to me then that you have materialized it. Okay. All right, what else I got here? More media literacy, flip classroom, art and technology, 
rubrics and assessment. A couple things I got to get rid of. Okay, and other than that, that's basically it. Um, if I go to... I'm looking for grading here. Oh. Waiting. Okay, and there it is. So, there are a couple of ways to approach grading. When you've hit the master's level, I, I, don't, I don't feel like parenting you. You're all grown up. You're graduate students. So, to me, with every project, you start with an A, which you can lose, versus the approach where you get one point for this, two points for that. That's a lot of Excel work for me. Here's what I know, is that if you start with an A, and and work the problem work the project come talk to me respond to my critiques and so on and keep improving it and so on then you keep your a if i give you input and you don't care about that and you walk away from it then the grade goes down um, if you are in real trouble of having a low grade i will tell you but i will tell you this process that i just described in terms of grading has yet to let me down in 15 years of working with the MAT program. I want you much more internally motivated and less externally motivated. But there it is, okay? Uh, a couple of things, ISTE net standards. These are the standards by which we, um, uh, we in the educational technology world um, sort of judge the efficacy of, of our efforts. Okay, let me go back. Okay, uh, SAMR evaluation. This is probably one of the more interesting and helpful evaluation models that has, that has arisen. And basically what SAMR says is you can, there are four levels of technology use and integration. You can substitute for what we already have. And use a word processor to replace a pencil in other words you can augment uh, what you're doing with the new technology and maybe a word presser allows for uh, processor allows for easier editing which facilitates different writing and so on so it changes it slightly in terms of opening up things you can do allows us to modify what we do. So we look at the technology and go, you know what, we can change what we're doing uh, in a couple of um, important ways. For example, we can now ask students to desktop publish. We now can expect of students a, a much uh, cleaner, more professional look in everything they print out because it's so easy to do it. And lastly, we can see technology as something that can redefine what we can do. We can get rid of the pencil and the no notion of tech centrism and create new media narrative, digital stories, and so on. Okay, so that's what SAMR is all about. Um, Kathy Schrock has a great page on SAMR. And if you're a Bloom freak, which I tend to be, you might find my page on that uh, topic helpful because I link it to media crea creation and I add two levels. I call it Bloom Plus Two. And if you're interested in what that is, let's make sure that page still works. There it is. Okay. Five phase media development process. Yes. And so at the top is not evaluation, it's creation and publication. And here what I do is I go through each level of bloom, knowledge, activities, blah, blah, blah. And this is all how it relates to having students create new media. Okay? All right. And you know what? And I think that's it. That's all I want. To, oh, here a cup. Oh, here is Bloom Plus 2. Writing using the seven Bs. Okay. <clears throat> this is something I developed because writing... Uh, on the web and writing an essay in a traditional format are very different. So I came up with the seven B's. Breaks, which means you add blank lines between paragraphs. Banners, my word for paragraph, uh, my word for titles for paragraphs. Bullets, you know what a bullet is. Boldface, you know what that is. Beginnings, 
uh, providing the first paragraph of a longer piece and then linking that to the entire piece. Fairly common these days. Beyond monochromatic text, a very fancy way of saying using color, but use it sparingly, avoid being cartoony. And boxes, easy to do in Word, but usually requires a little programming to do in a web environment. And just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, here's your traditional essay, here's the exact same information using what I call visually differentiated text, using the seven Bs, okay? Okay. And now I really do think that's it. Okay, I'm going to go in and fix those couple of things I just saw. And if you see anything that doesn't look right or, you know, because what I did is I took last year's site and I updated it, and there might be sort of vestiges of that, uh, please let me know. Okay. Perfect ending to the music. Take care.